start saying these early in these videos, you know, like, subscribe, comment movie was garbage, it was trash, it was horrible, uh, it has no absolute worth for the Mortal Kombat universe, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. Alright, and again, welcome to Dr. Dead, aka the channel for horror, manga, anime, and whatever I feel like ranting about, because I love to rant. Now, if you haven't guessed, I have an extreme love for Mortal Kombat since I was at least four years old. And since I was four, uh, my pops, my uncle basically used to play video games together. It would be Tekken sometimes, sometimes be Mortal Kombat, other days it would be like Sonic or Mario or something for Nintendo. Fighting games became my ultra love, so uh, with, regarding the fighting game community, that's something I got into recently, but as far as enjoying time with family, as far as having fun, as far as yelling whoopsies, as far as yelling toasty, which I always say it wrong, I always say, you know, whoopsies, this will be toasty. But guess how old I was when I figured that out? And I like 25. But we're talking about something where I remember blowing the cartridge on it, because, you know, the old school Nintendo, you blow a cartridge on them. You know, playing these games with my uncle and my father was pretty much a good pastime for me, and that's how we spent quality time a lot. Pouring out over the words Mortal Kombat. It took a while to realize that this wasn't another Schwarzenegger blockbuster, but the latest addition to Britain's fastest growing entertainment industry, computer games. Based on a popular video arcade game, Mortal Kombat is a martial arts war at your fingertips, technically more sophisticated and graphically more violent than existing games. When I went to go see Mortal Kombat at a very young age, it was seen as a very inappropriate game for children. <laughs> the fatalities, everybody would you know, scream about, oh my God, I need fucking kids, oh my God. It was simply a pastime that could never be forgotten, and most importantly, something that got me into gaming as a whole. Because Mortal Kombat was different than the other games. You were actually <laughs> ripping people's body parts apart, you know, fatalities, babalities, animalities, like, what the fuck is that? You know, at some point everybody calmed down towards the early 2000s, but Mortal Kombat was not seen as a game for kids. I mean, it was very mature. Um, I think for some places, A17, I would have to relook that up and, you know, put that in the video. Yeah, so I saw a lot of, whether it be my friends, associates, people that are pretty much just the general goer. Absolutely no fatalities in the previous Mortal Kombat movie. Um, and I literally rewatched them. I rewatched them recently. The action is great. Robin Show plays Liu Kang, does a great job, which I'll mention a million times in this video. We're talking about the current Mortal Kombat series, and we're discussing how, basically how better the Mortal Kombat 90s movies are compared to the current one. And I would disagree that it is much better based off of what the fandom, original fandom, mind you, really wanted. And what the fuck did we want? We wanted fucking fatalities. And, you know, just like the previous movies, you know, we have Johnny Cage and Sonya who are replaced. So in Annihilation, um, Johnny Cage had a replacement, Sonya had a replacement. And in these new movies, obviously, everyone was replaced. Um, every single character. So I'm fine with the new ones. It's not the previous actors outside of who I mentioned. Uh, pretty much, it's not they did a good job. I'm sorry, they didn't really do a good job in comparable to even previous actors, let alone the current ones. So, and we have Hanzo, who is Scorpion. Uh, both these characters are fighting hand in hand. Bihan kills Scorpion's wife. Um, Hanzo and him go hand in hand in a sword battle, which is a beautiful choreographed sword battle. Um, I would arguably say it's like Samurai Shampoo. To me, everyone has a different viewpoint on this, but to me, that's how I feel about it. Scorpion loses, of course, and he cur curses. Scorpion curses Bihan in his death. Get over um, going here. forward, um, Raiden comes, takes his descendant. Uh, his descendant later on, they will reveal later in the movie. You know, Raiden appears, he saves Scorpion's descendant, and you know, the movie starts from there. And you have actors like Robin Sho, who played Liu Kang, who was in the Street Fighter movie, Mortal Kombat, and a myriad of multiple and excessive movies involving martial arts, because, well, He's experienced in it. Then you have Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa, who plays Sang Shang, and both him and Liu Kang, Robin Shou, also were martial artists. So you got him in Kung Fu, you have uh, Kerry in Kung Fu, they're both phenomenal actors and martial artists, period. 
you can't really replace that. If we're talking like well over 40 years of experience right now, James Wan and Simon McQuid, uh, the director and producer of the Mortal Kombat movie, you know, they give them the benefit of doubt. I mean, they had a lot to work with. They didn't have top tier actors in this movie. They had a lot of B and C list based actors, so I understand. Cole, he looks like a Johnny fucking Cage replacement. He's fighting in a cage. He's like getting his ass beat. The trainer's making fun of him like the old guy from Rocky. Because you had the talent to become a good fighter. And instead of that, you became a leg breaker to some cheap second rate loan shark. To live in? It's a waste of life. Now, to Louis Tan's credit in the Mortal Kombat movies, he was in Into the Badlands, Deadpool 2, and a myriad of also martial arts-based movies, so it's not like he played Cole with no acting experience or never actually done martial arts in his life. Tabanobu Asano was a much better actor um, than the rating that we did get in the Mortal Kombat movies back in 1995 and 1998, so it's... Yeah, you're not really fucking missing much. Anyways, on to the movie, I will say I did like the new Liu Kang and also Kong Lao's appearance in this movie as well. Alright, so when the movie starts, uh, we get a little quote once the movie truly begins, and it says, Earth Realm is on the verge of a catastrophe. Uh, should it lose one more tournament, the savage realm of our world will invade, but on an ancient prophecy foretells that a new group of champions will be united by the rise of Hanzo Hasashi's blood. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's in the intro, like some Star Wars shit. <laughs> yeah, the first 12 minutes was a fucking travesty. I don't know what I was watching. It was nice seeing Sub-Zero and Scorpion fight. It would be nice to know, you know, who they were or introduced to who they were more naturally compared to how we did see them. And when Jax walked in without his metal arms, I was already disappointed. Spoiler or no spoiler, if Jax walks in a room, and you don't see him with metal arms. I had rewatched this movie three times. I won't lie. By the third rewatch, I finally understood what exactly was going on, where the story was going, who Sub Zero is, who Hanzo is, who Scorpion is, and how Cole ties into it. It was basically Scorpion's descendant from hundreds of years ago. That's it. Raiden takes him, raises him. And then we're going into Cole's story. So I know a lot of previous Mortal Kombat fans are like, why is Liu Kang not focused on? Which we see again later in the movie. You know, then we have Sub-Zero and Shang Tsung who are in the outer world discussing how god tier they are, how uh, mainly they are, and how no one can beat them. And they must go out and kill all the human beings on Earth so they can win Mortal Kombat. I know it's 2021, there's absolutely no excuse for outer world look like shit. And I'll tell you visually, I love it way better than how it used to look. The old version was really shitty CGI. And while they're talking about how manly and strong they are, you know, we gotta go and conquer Earth. It sounded very reminiscent of someone I know. After 10,000 years, I'm free. It's time to conquer Earth. So while Jax is trying to protect Cole and, you know, all the other characters such as Sonya, really. Sub-Zero pulls up, kills a random bystander, beats the shit out of Jax, rips his arms off pretty much after freezing him, I believe. It was really, really, really fucked up. But I told you, if you see Jax, what happens? So, Iacana is the very focal point of the movie. Iacana gives every character the ability to use like Liu Kang's fireball, a Sonya's little purple thing, a Cabal's super speed, Kano's cyborg eye blast. Um, any fatality ability, all that's based off the Akana. Later on in the movie, everyone's able to finally use the Akana. Uh, Kano, for instance, was able to use the Akana in a very strange way. And basically, Cole and Goro are going one-on-one. -on -one. He starts losing, and then he turns into the bronze kneecap. And the funny thing about Goro and Cole having their one-on-one -on -one match was simply, Cole magically, as the bronze kneecap, starts using grappling and wrestling-based techniques. Like, randomly out of nowhere. Now, don't get me started on that corny ass line talking about badass suit dad. No! No! I want to talk about Cole. Cole is one of the most boring main characters I've seen in a fighting movie. I don't think he's more boring than Chun-Li in the Street Fighter movie, but he's boring. He's absolutely no consistent form of martial arts. He gets his ass beat most of the movie, and when he does use martial arts, he pulls out multiple abilities and technique forms. Like, 
I swore at, at one point he was doing some type of, I don't know, Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu or something. He was just pulling out multiple techniques that he never used throughout the entire movie randomly when he got what I call the Shonen power up or the Polo Scorpion Sun. He has free reign to get everything that he gets in the story. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Cole, Hanzo, Scorpion. This is the line. I don't know what else to tell you. Is the dreams that Cole kept having. Um, those were very vivid and I liked how they were shown, but he was just dreaming about his ancestor. So I thought it was Shang Tsung. And then once we realize who that is, it's like, I don't give a shit. So when he returns with her third replacement, because, you know, Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, you know, two different songs. This is the third one. And unlike her other versions, uh, I mean, she's still the same. But this version of her is pretty, she's more enjoyable. She beats the Sharon Kano a lot. And it's very nice to see her not take verbal or physical abuse as much. Kano is uh, an annoying little shit. Um, his character doesn't really bring much value. The, the actor, it just felt like he copied off the previous Kano. Uh, I will give him that he was entertaining to some degree, despite how annoying he was. And even in the later part of the movie, him and his old relationship with Cabal was very interesting. Um, no one's surprised by his decisions that he made later on. Lines like Kano wins and all the fatality statements you hear later on. That is the best part of the fucking movie. Now, I should talk about Sub-Zero last, since he was the main antagonist, not Shang Tsung in this movie. Um, Shang Tsung is likely going to be built up to be the antagonist in later films. Sub-Zero just didn't have much substance to him. He was just coming in, beating the shit out of everybody else, and disappearing. Stab, kill, stab, kill, disappear. That was literally his character. You watch an action film, there's an antagonist. Usually the antagonist is either a bitch, he has little to next to no substance and death to his character, um, or he just is a stereotype, a walking archetype. Uh, character that just follows the general concepts of what an antagonist is and it happens repeatedly back and forth it's annoying sometimes um sub-zero is kind of like that in a way he's a ninja that stays quiet kicks ass and keeps it moving there's, there's no more depth to his character than that i just don't have much to say about Liu kang's character i liked him in the 2021 version he he's not better than robin show uh, like the power as i mentioned earlier Ludi Lin actually who played Liu Kang in this movie, he played uh, the Black Ranger in the Power Rangers reboot, just to give some clarification. So Ludi Lin is the Black Ranger who also played in this. So I really didn't have much to add to it. I'm not gonna say he did a decent role in the reboot of the Power Rangers movie, but he was okay. Uh, the Jack storyline, I would say was pretty boring. Uh, I did think it was pretty fucked up when Sub-Zero ripped his arms off. I thought he was gonna die the way Sub-Zero beat his ass. When they gave Jax those skinny ass arms, I laughed and that was so disrespectful. When Raiden saved Hanzo's child, that child ended up over generations making coal. Since apparently this movie starts in the 17th century, um, Raiden only cares about those descendants. He doesn't care about anything else. He only cares about Mortal Kombat. This entire movie was really just a war between Bihan and Hanzo. Some Zero and Scorpion one off for generations and we're just in the crossfires of it all. Majority of the characters describe it, especially Raiden, is that this is a, the ninth and or 10th tournament. Uh, humanity can't handle losing another tournament. So Liu Kang, uh, his goal and his purpose is pretty much to train him and Kung Lao of uh, the rest of the combatants, which means Kung Lao and Liu Kang's goals are to train Sonya to train uh, Cole, um, Jax, etc. Kano even as well. Now, so let's start with action here. Fucking action was the bread and butter of the fucking movie. Sub-Zero fighting Jax was pretty much just get him getting stomped out. I mentioned it before, but seriously, it's literally Jax just getting his ass beat, frozen, and his arms ripped off. You know, I wish I could tell you that the fight scenes were something special music-wise. But I'm sorry, the original soundtrack for the previous Mortal Kombat movies weren't this much better. You know, the only thing about it, the whole situation that was even funny in the first place, just everybody getting stomped the fuck out of when they were fighting. The only training match that mattered was when Kung Lao was fighting Cole, because Cole was trying to do a lot of, like, lower attacks. Um, and every single time Kung Lao, like, was getting hurt or he felt that he was too in some level of danger, he threw his Arcana hat and that motherfucker... <laughs> 
the damn thing is literally a death trap. It's basically a knife, a big ass hat knife. Okay. People are dead. The fatalities are fucking amazing. Sub Zero's fatality, Kung Lao's fatality, first of all. Kung Lao's fucking fatality. Whoever the fuck Kung Lao killed, and I'm not looking it up. <laughs> but whoever he killed, he sliced in half. That's the fucking fatalities we were supposed to get back in 95. They shouldn't have waited until 2021, but. You know, I know they were in production hell for almost nearly, what, two decades? Can we blame Warner Brothers? I think we can, can we? Liu Kang using his fire dragon to eat Cabal in a blazing hell was one of the most beautiful fatalities in the fucking movie. Basically, in conclusion, this entire series was supposed to be just the intro. Uh, it's very clear that the Mortal Kombat series has gone through a lot. The final fight is between Hanzo and Bihan and Cole just happens to be in the middle of it. Cole, to me, for the bulk of the fight, he was unnecessary. He's only in the final fight because he's a protagonist. Um, he wasn't really helpful. Uh, most of the fight was really Hanzo and Bihan going hand in hand. Well, I won't spoil that portion, so just watch the damn movie. And don't get me started on the new Mortal Kombat. You know, I've heard from the fighting game community that the new Mortal Kombat is pretty much dead outside of tournaments. Because normally it's fuck Warner Brothers, but this time, you know what? I give them a little bit of credit. Raiden going, We play the games for the violence, the combos, and the fatalities. The same applies to the movies. If you watch the Mortal Kombat for a good story and plot, I don't understand who you are as a person and as a fan. Finally got delivered. Finally got delivered. It'll be cool. When it comes to action. I'm expecting them to kind of further delve into the storylines a little bit with the next couple of movies. We got Shao Kahn, uh, we have Quan Chi. I saying the movie is perfect? No. We could have had a better plot. We could have had better actors. We could have had better, arguably, action too. But we got something. I, I'm not gonna fucking complain. You want from me, you fucking cocksucker? Where's my fucking money? I'll get it, I'll get it. My neck, Tony. And what do you think, I'm an asshole? Great movie. Great game, and hopefully this will expand the universes overall for Mortal Kombat. All right, first things first, surprise, I got a new camera. Finally! I got a D3200, um, got the lighting is kind of set up. I'm supposed to get a rim light, a key light, a fill light. Um, eventually at some point, the process as far as me creating videos is gonna get better. We will consistently get better. Um, this is a 50mm as far as the start of the video. And I'm uh, using in between the 35mm uh, 1.8 Nikon lens, so we'll see how that goes. I'll be further experimenting and improving. And if you're on other platforms, if it's not Dr. Dad, if they left the chips. So this includes, you know, Twitch, Instagram, uh, Twitter, any other platform really I'm on. I'm forgetting to plug this in. Uh, follow me on Twitch. I stream on there randomly Wednesdays, Saturdays, Fridays, whenever the fuck I feel like really. But follow me on there, Dr. Dad TTV. I want to stick to a strict schedule of videos dropping every Wednesday, but if that don't happen, it'll be like every two weeks. Also, I'm just going to say it again. Uh, definitely comment it below what you think. Do you think this movie is a good movie? Do you think this is a bad movie? Like I said, this is a phenomenal movie to me, and I hope it expands the entire MK universe. That'll be the end of this video. I'm going to have a couple more videos coming up. Uh, one's going to be on Midsomnar, because I'm a big horror guy. Uh, Carl Nogo, and uh, the rest will just depend on uh, what I feel like doing. And with that, I hope everyone takes care. Uh, Dr. Dead out.